Matwes. Abba Matwes said, I prefer a light and steady activity to one that is painful at the beginning, but is soon broken off. He also said, The nearer a man draws to God, the more he sees himself a sinner. It was when Isaiah the prophet saw God that he declared himself a man of unclean lips. He also said, When I was young, I would say to myself, Perhaps one day I shall do something good. But now that I am old, I see that there is nothing good about me. He also said, Satan does not know by what passion the soul can be overcome. He sows, but without knowing if he will reap. Sometimes thoughts of fornication, sometimes thoughts of slander, and similarly for the other passions. He supplies nourishment to the passion, which he sees the soul is slipping towards. A brother went to Abba Matuas and said to him, How is it that the monks of Skites did more than the scriptures required in loving their enemies more than themselves? Abba Matuas said to him, As for me, I have not yet managed to love those who love me as I love myself. A brother questioned Abba Matuas, What ought I to do when a brother comes to see me, and it is a fast day, or in the morning? This worries me. The old man said to him, If you don't fuss about it and simply eat with the brother, that is all right. But if you are not expecting anyone and you eat, that is your own will. Abba James said that he went to Abba Matoas's cell, and when he left he said to him, I want to go to the cells. He said to me, Greet Abba John for me. So, going to Abba John's cell, I said to him, Abba Matoas greets you. The old man said to me, Abba Matoas is an Israelite, indeed, in whom there is no guile. A year later, I returned to Abba Matoas and gave him Abba John's greeting. The old man said, I am not worthy of what the old man said, but know this, whenever you hear an old man praising his neighbor more than himself, it is because he has reached a great stature, for this is perfection, to praise one neighbor more than oneself. Abba Matoa said, A brother came to me and said, Slander is worse than fornication. I said to him, That is a hard saying. He said to me, What do you mean? I said to him, Slander is bad, but it is soon healed, for he who slanders often repents, saying that he has spoken unkindly. But fornication is physical death. One day Abba Matoas went to Raithu, in the region of Magdolos. A brother went with him, and the bishop seized the old man and made him a priest. While they were eating together, the bishop said, Forgive me, Abba. I know you did not want it, but it was in order that I might be blessed by you, that I dared to do it. The old man said humbly to him, I did not wish it to be sure. But what really troubles me is that I must be separated from the brother who is with me, and I am not able to keep on saying the prayers quite alone. The bishop said to him, If you know that he is worthy, I will ordain him too. Abba Matoa said, I do not know if he is worthy of it. I know only one thing, that he is better than I. So the bishop ordained him also. Both of them died without having approached the sanctuary to make the offering. The old man used to say, I have confidence in God that I shall not suffer great condemnation through the laying on of hands, since I do not make the offering. For the laying on of hands is for those who are without reproach. Abba Matoas said that three old men went to Abba Paphnutius, who is called Kephalos, to ask a word of him. The old man said to them, What do you want me to say to you? A spiritual word or a bodily word? They said, A spiritual word. The old man said to them, Go and choose trials rather than quietness, dishonor rather than glory, and to give rather than to receive. A brother questioned Abba Matoa, saying, Give me a word. He said to him, Go and pray God to put compunction in your heart, 
and give you humility. Be aware of your faults. Do not judge others, but put yourself below everyone. Do not be friendly with a boy, nor with a heretical friend. Put freedom of speech far from you. Control your tongue and your belly. Drink only a small quantity of wine. And if someone speaks about some topic, do not argue with him. But if he is right, say, yes. If he is wrong, say, you know what you are saying. And do not argue with him about what he has said. That is humility. A brother said to Abba Matoas, Give me a word. He said to him, Restrain the spirit of controversy in yourself in everything, and weep. Have compunction, for the time is drawing near. A brother questioned Abba Matoas, saying, What am I to do? My tongue makes me suffer, and every time I go among men, I cannot control it. But I condemn them in all the good they are doing, and reproach them with it. What am I to do? The old man replied, If you cannot contain yourself, flee into solitude, for this is a sickness. He who dwells with brethren must not be square, but round, so as to turn himself towards all. He went on, It is not through virtue that I live in solitude, but through weakness. Those who live in the midst of men are the strong ones. Mark Disciple of Abba Silvanus It was said of Abba Silvanus that at Scites he had a disciple called Mark, whose obedience was great. He was a scribe. The old man loved him because of his obedience. He had eleven other disciples who were hurt because he loved him more than them. When they knew this, the elders were sorry about it, and they came one day to him to reproach him about it. Taking them with him, he went to knock at each cell, saying, Brother so-and-so, come here, I need you. But none of them came immediately. Coming to Mark's cell, he knocked and said, Mark. Hearing the old man's voice, he jumped up immediately, and the old man sent him off to serve, and said to the elders, Fathers, where are the other brothers? Then he went into Mark's cell, and picked up his book, and noticed that he had begun to write the letter Omega, but when he had heard the old man, he had not finished writing it. Then the elder said, Truly, Abba, he whom you love, we love too, and God loves him. They said this of Abba Silvanus, that as he was walking to Scites one day with the old man, and wishing to demonstrate his disciple Mark's obedience, and show the reason for his affection for him, he said to him, seeing a small wild boar, Boy, do you see that little buffalo? He said to him, Yes, Abba. And do you see his horns, how attractive they are? He said to him, Yes, Abba. The old men were astonished at his reply, and edified by his obedience. Abba Mark's mother came down to see him one day, with great pomp. The old men went out to meet her. She said to him, Abba, Tell my son to come out so that I may see him. So the old man went back and said to him, Go out and let your mother see you. He was wearing ragged garments and coming from the kitchen, so he was very dirty. He went out under obedience and closed his eyes and said to them, Greetings, greetings, greetings. But he did not see them at all. His mother did not recognize him. So she sent a message to the old man again, Abba, Send me my son, so that I may see him. He said to Mark, Did I not tell you to go out, so your mother would see you? Mark said to him, As you said, Abba, I went out. But please, do not tell me a second time to go out, because I do not want to disobey you. The old man went out and said to the mother, Your son was he who came to meet you, saying greetings. Then he comforted her and sent her away. On another occasion, Mark decided to leave Scites and go to Mount Sinai and live there. His mother sent his Abba a message, begging him with tears to send her son out to see her. So the old man made him go. But as he was putting on his sheepskin to go, and preparing to take leave of the old man, he suddenly burst into tears and did not go out after all. It was said of Abba Silvanus that when he wished to go away to Syria, his disciple Mark said to him, Father, 
I do not want to leave this place, nor to let you go away, Abba. Stay here for three days. And on the third day, Mark died. Milesios While traveling through a certain region, Abba Milesios saw a monk whom someone had seized under the pretext that he had committed a murder. The old man went and questioned the brother. Learning that he had been wrongly accused, he said to those who were holding him, Where is the man who has been killed? They showed him to him. Telling them all to pray, he went up to the dead man. While he was stretching his hands toward heaven, the dead man stood up. He said to him in front of everyone, Tell us who killed you. The man said, As I was going into the church, I gave some money to the priest. He stood up and killed me. Then he took me and threw me into the Abba's monastery. Therefore I beseech you to take the money and give it to my children. Then the old man said to him, Go and rest until the Lord comes and awakens you. Another time when he was living with two disciples on the borders of Persia, two of the king's sons, brothers by blood, went to hunt according to their custom. They spread nets around a wide area, at least 40 miles, so as to be able to hunt and shoot everything that was found inside the nets. Now the old man happened to be there with his two disciples. Seeing him all hairy and like a wild man, they were struck with amazement and said to him, Tell us if you are a man or a spirit. He said to them, I am a sinful man, and have come away to weep for my sins. And I adore Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. They said to him, There is no God save the sun, the fire, and the water, which they worshipped. Therefore come and make a sacrifice in their honor. He said to them, They are creatures, and you are wrong. But I implore you to be converted, and to acknowledge the true God, the creator of all these things. They said to him, You say that the man who was condemned and crucified is the true God? The old man said, He who has crucified sin and killed death is he whom I say is the true God. But they tortured him and the brothers to compel them to offer sacrifice. After many torments they beheaded the two brothers, but they tortured the old man for many days. Finally they used a different procedure, and placing him between them, they shot arrows at him, one in front and the other behind. But he said to them, Since you have agreed about shedding innocent blood, at the same time tomorrow, at the same hour, your mother will no longer have you as sons, and will be deprived of your love, and by your own arrows you will shed each other's blood. They scorned his words, and went to hunt the next day. A hart ran close to them. They spurred their horses and galloped after it. They threw their javelins at it, and they pierced each other's hearts, as the old man had said when he warned them. And so they died. Motius A brother questioned Abba Motius, saying, If I go to dwell somewhere, how do you want me to live? The old man said to him, If you live somewhere, do not seek to be known for anything special. Do not say, for example, I do not go to the Synaxis, or perhaps, I do not eat at the Agape, for these things make an empty reputation, and later you will be troubled because of this. For men rush there where they find these practices. The brother said to him, What shall I do then? The old man said, Wherever you live, follow the same manner of life as everyone else, and if you see devout men, whom you trust doing something, do the same, and you will be at peace. For this is humility, to see yourself to be the same as the rest. When men see you, do not go beyond the limits. They will consider you to be the same as everyone else, and no one will trouble you. Concerning Abba Motius, his disciple Abba Isaac told this, both of them became bishops. This old man was the first to build a monastery at Heracleopolis, and when he left, he went to another place and did the same there. But through the power of the devil, 
there was a brother who opposed him and grieved him. The old man got up and withdrew to his own village. He built a monastery there and lived as a recluse. After some time the old man came from the place he had left, bringing with them the brother who had distressed him, to ask him to take him into his hermitage. When they drew near to the place where Abba Soros was, they left their sheepskins with this Abba together with the brother in question. When they knocked, Motius put up the ladder, looked out, recognized them, and said, Where are your sheepskins? They said, Down there with the brother. As soon as he heard the name of the brother who had distressed him, in his joy the old man took the hatchet, battered down the door, and came running out to where the brothers was. He went to him first of all, and made a prostration to him, and embraced him. He took him into his cell. For three days he entertained them all, and relaxed with them, which he was not accustomed to do. Then he got up and went home with them. Later he became a bishop. In fact, he was a wonder worker, and blessed Kirill made his disciple Abba Isaac a bishop also. Megatheos They said of Abba Megatheos that if he left his cell and it occurred to him to leave the place where he was living, he would go without returning to his cell. He owned nothing in this world except a knife with which he cut reeds, and every day he made three small baskets, which was all he needed for his food. They said of Abba Megatheos that he was very humble, for he was brought up by the Egyptians, and in contact with many old men, including Abba Sisoes and Abba Piman. He lived on the river bank at Sinai. It happened, as he himself related, that one of the holy men visited him and said to him, Brother, what is your way of life in this desert? He said, Every second day I eat one loaf only. The old man said to him, I advise you to eat half the loaf every day. This he did, and he found rest. Some of the fathers questioned Abba Mechatheos, saying, If some cooked food remains over for the next day, do you recommend the brethren to eat it? The old man said to them, If this food is bad, it is not right to compel the brethren to eat it, in case it makes them ill, but it should be thrown away. But if it is still good, and is thrown away through extravagance in order to prepare more, that is wrong. He also said, Originally, when we met together, we spoke of edifying things, encouraging one another, and we were like the angels, we ascended up to the heavens. But now, when we come together, we only drag one another down by gossiping, and so we go down to hell. Mios Abba Mios of Belos said, Obedience responds to obedience. When someone obeys God, God obeys his request. Concerning an old man who was at Scythes, he said that he had been a slave and he had become a true reader of hearts. Every year he went to Alexandria, taking his wages to his masters. They went to meet him with great respect. But the old man put water into a basin, and brought it to wash his master's feet. They said to him, No, father, do not overwhelm us. But he said to them, I acknowledge that I am your slave, and I acknowledge that you have left me free to serve God. I wash your feet, and you accept my wages, which are here. They argued, not wishing to receive them. So he said to them, if you refuse to accept them, I shall remain here and serve you. Since they revered him, they allowed him to do what he wanted. Then they saw him off, giving him many provisions and money so that he could give alms for them. For this reason he became famous and beloved in Scythes. A soldier asked Abba Mios if God accepted repentance. After the old man had taught him many things, he said, Tell me, my dear, if your cloak is torn, do you throw it away? He replied, No, I mend it and use it again. The old man said to him, 
if you are so careful about your cloak, will not God be equally careful about his creature? Mark the Egyptian It was said of Abba Mark the Egyptian that he lived for thirty years without going out of his cell. The priest used to take Holy Communion to him. But the devil, seeing the remarkable endurance of this man, decided to tempt him by making him blame the priest. He brought it about that a demoniac went to the old man under the pretext of asking for prayers. Before anything was said, the possessed man cried out to the old man, Your priest smells of sin. Do not let him come near you any more. But Mark, filled with the Spirit of God, said to him, My son, everyone rids himself of impurity, but you bring it. It is written, Judge not, for that you be not judged. However, even if he is a sinner, the Lord will save him, for it is written, Pray for one another, that you may be healed. When he had said this, and when he had prayed, he drove the devil out of the man, and sent him away healed. When the priest came, according to his custom, the old man received him with joy. Seeing the absence of malice in the old man, the good God showed him a marvel. When the priest prepared himself to stand before the holy table, this is what the old man related. I saw the angel of the Lord descend from heaven and place his hand on the priest's head and became like a pillar of fire. I was filled with wonder at this sight, and I heard a voice saying to me, Man, why are you astonished at this? In truth, if an earthly king does not allow his nobles to stand in his presence in soiled garments, but only arrayed in glory, how much more will the divine power purify the servants of the holy mysteries who stand before the heavenly glory? And the noble athlete of Christ, Mark the Egyptian, became great and was judged worthy of this grace because he had not judged the priest. Macarius of Alexandria Abba Macarius of Alexandria went one day with some brethren to cut reeds. The first day the brethren said to him, Come and eat with us, Father. So he went to eat with them. The next day they invited him again to eat, but he would not consent, saying, My children, you need to eat because you are carnal, but I do not want food now. Abba Macarius went one day to Abba Pacomius of Tabanisi. Pacomius asked him, When brothers do not submit to the rule, is it right to correct them? Abba Macarius said to him, Correct and judge justly those who are subject to you, but judge no one else. For truly it is written, Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside. For four months Abba Macarius visited a brother every day, and he did not once find him distracted from prayer. Filled with wonder, he said, He is an angel on earth.